So we've talked about different transformations that can happen to a graph. Now let's look at how it actually affects the graph and how we would graph the results. So this can be a bit confusing, the terminology here. The graph of P of X is shown. So this is P of X, the picture that is right now on the graph. Use it to graph Y equals P of X minus 1 plus 2. So we need to make the proper transformations that we've learned to make a new graph from, from this one. So what changes are going to be made to the graph? Well, the plus 2 on the end means we're going to shift it up to the minus 1 inside of the parentheses. Remember, anything inside is opposite of what we would think. Minus is actually going to move it to the right 1. So what we're going to do is take every single one of these points. We're going to move them 1 to the right and up 2. So let's start here with the negative 6, negative 2. A1 to the right and up 2 puts me here. Let me use, I'll use black for my new point. There we go. Let's do the same thing with our negative 4, negative 2. We're going to move it 1 to the right and up 2. There's our result. 0, 2, 1 to the right and up 2, and there's our result. Go down here to the 2, negative 1. We're going to go 1 to the right and up 2. And finally, our 4, 2, 1 to the right and up 2. And then we just connect the dots in the same order they were connected before. Okay, we don't want to change the shape. We're just shifting it. So that is what our new result would be. You can go ahead and label those points if you choose to do so. We have one at negative 5, 0. Negative 3, 4, 1, 4, 5, 4, and 3, 1. Okay? So there's our first example. Let's take a look. We're going to use the same original graph, but we have some different transformations to take place here. Okay, so let's take a look. This minus 1 on the end would move the graph down 1. Okay, the plus 2 on the inside is going to shift it to the left 2. And the 1 half in the front is going to shrink vertically by 1 half. Okay, so let's try and take a look at this. So it would move it Okay, it's going to take each of our y values, we're going to multiply it by 1 half, okay, and then we're going to move it down 1. So let's take, even if you want to do the points individually, some people like to pull the points off and take a look at what happens there. Okay, um, here's our first example, negative 6, negative 2. We're going to take our y value times a half. That would make it negative 1, okay? And then if we were to move that down 1, we'd come back to negative 2. The next thing we need to do is deal with the x values, which were supposed to be shifted to the left 2. So that would bring us here. Okay, let's look now at our, up here at negative 4, negative 2 or excuse me, negative 4, 2. We're going to take the y value of 2 and multiply by half. That would give us negative 4, 1, and move it down 1, which puts us at 0, negative 4, 0, and then we want to move it 2 to the left. That puts us here. I need to use a different color so we can see this a little better. Okay. Next point, 0, 2. Again, you take the y value times a half would be 1 and move it down 1. So that puts us at 0. Um, then I have one more thing I have to do to that point, right? I have to move it to, to the left. All right, now let's do 
our next point here, negative 2, negative 1. We take the y value and multiply it by a half. That gives us negative 1 half. If we move that down 1, we get negative 1 and a half. So we're down at negative 1 and a half here, but we still need to move 2 to the left, which puts us here at 0, negative 1 and a half. Our last point, 4, 2. We take our y value and multiply it by half, so that gives us 4, 1. Okay, then we have to go down 1, or subtract 1, which puts us at 0, 4, 0. And last thing we have to do is move it 2 to the left. So we end up at 2, 0. Notice it's the same basic shape. It's been squished <laughs> by half, and it's been shifted to the left by 2 units. All right, here is our next example. So let's take a look at what transformations we're going to have to, to do to this. Um, notice the negative 2 in front of the P of X. That means that we're going to flip it upside down, so reflect over the X axis. Okay, flip it upside down, or take our Y values and multiply them by a negative. There's also a 2 there. Okay, so that's going to stretch it by a factor of 2. So what we're going to do because of this negative 2 is we're going to take our y values of our points that we have times negative 2. Okay, the 1 here, notice it's outside of our function, it's a positive 1. Notice positive, no negative in front, that's going to move the graph up 1. So for our y values, we have to do two things to them. We have to multiply by negative 2, and then we have to add 1. Now let's look at anything happening to our x values. Yep, inside of here, notice there's a plus 3. Okay, that's going to move us to the left 3. So let's try this with each of our points. Okay, so let's make our vertical change first. So we take our y value of negative 2 times negative 2 would be 4, and add 1, that puts us at 5. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. For our x values, we need to move it 3 to the left. So 3 to the left of negative 6 would be negative 9. So we are at negative 9, 5. Okay. Let's try our next point, negative 4, 2. So our y value needs to multiply by negative 2. Okay, so it's going to flip it upside down. That would give us negative 4. It stretched it twice as far and flipped it upside down. Then you add 1. Negative 4 plus 1 would be negative 3. Okay, so we know our, our resulting y value is going to be negative 3. For our x, we need to move it 3 to the left. Okay, so clear down there. Let's try our next point, 0, 2. Again, our y value, we're going to take it times negative 2, so that would give us negative 4, and we're going to add 1. So negative 3 is our y value where it will end up. For our x, we just need to move 3 to the left. So we would be at negative 3, negative 3. There's our next point, 2, negative 1. So again, multiply the y value of negative 1 times negative 2 gives us positive 2. Add 1 gives us positive 3 for our y value. So we know our y value will be up at 3. Our x value should be 3 to the left of here. So at negative 1, positive 3. And we have our final point, 4, 2. So again, our y value is 2. We multiply by negative 2, gives us negative 4. Add 1 puts us at negative 3. Our x is 4, excuse me, 3 to the left of here. So we are at 1, negative 3, and then we just connect our dots.
Notice it's been flipped upside down, okay, which is the result of multiplying by the negative. It's taller, and it's moved three to the left and up one. Okay, so over that last one, I didn't throw you too much. That was a lot of changes to make. This last one I picked on purpose because this is kind of throws us for a loop. Um, we have a cha one change to our y values. Notice the positive one outside of the function. That's going to move us up one. Okay. And then over here, we have changes inside. Notice we have the negative in front of the x, which we know means reflects over the x-axis, excuse me, the y-axis, or flips it sideways. Okay, however, when it's inside, what you need to do is whatever is in front of x, you need to factor that out. Okay, so what we really have is p of negative x minus 1. Notice if we distributed that negative back through, we'd end up with exactly the same thing. I know that's a little weird, but that's kind of what has to happen. The negative tells us we're going to multiply our x's by negative 1, and this tells us that we're going to be moving 1 to the right. Okay? So we're going to multiply our x values by a negative 1 and then move them 1 to the right. Our y values, we're just going to move up 1. So let's try this out. Let's start with this for this point over here, negative 6, negative 2. So my x value, I'm going to multiply it by a negative. So negative 6 times negative 1 gives me a positive 6. Flips it clear over here to this side, which is what it was supposed to do. Okay, but then we need to move that 1 to the right. Okay, so from 6, we move... We move 1 to the right, and we get 7. Okay, now let's change our y value says to move up 1. It was at negative 2. It's now going to be at negative 1. So we are at the point, let me count this out, 7, negative 1, and I need to turn off my little arrow button. There we go. Let's try our next point, negative 4, 2. So you take your x value times a negative to flip it over to the other side of the graph, to the right-hand side, okay? And then we're going to move it 1 to the right, so from 4 would move us to 5. Our y value needs to go up 1, so we're going to be at 5, 3. Because it was at negative 4, 2, we ended up at 5, 3. Okay, next point is 0, 2. We multiply our x by a negative, but 0 times negative 1 is just 0. We move it 1 to the right, would put us at 1, 2, and then we have to move up 1. So we end up at 1, 3. Our next point, at 2, negative 1, we multiply by a negative, our x value that flips us over here to the other side of the graph. Okay gives our x a value of negative 2, but then we're supposed to move it 1 to the right, so that moves it over to negative 1. The last thing we have to do is move it up 1. So we end up here. And I keep forgetting to turn off my arrow button. Eek. Okay, negative 1, excuse, sorry, <laughs> negative 1, 0, operator error there. And we have one point left, 0.42. So we multiply it by a negative, that flips us over here to negative 4. Okay, and move 1 to the right, puts us at negative 3, and then we have to move up 1. So we end up at negative 3, 3. And we want to go ahead and connect the dots. Notice we have the same basic shape, but it has been flipped sideways so that the V portion is on the left and the plateau is on the right. It's also been moved to the left, excuse me, to the right one and up one from its original position. 
So that gives you a little bit of experience. It's something you kind of have to do on your own to get the hang of it. Um, so try out a couple more and see how you do.